Hi everybody, well, it is product refresh cycle time. What does that really mean? Well, Kawhi is out with a new set of KDP digital pianos. We're back with the 120 and the 75, and that's replacing the KDP 110 and the KDP 70. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the differences between the 120 and the 75, but also how those compare to their predecessors. So if you are brand new to the market, well, it's going to be a nice um, back and forth comparison between the 120 and the 75, hopefully help you sort out what the better fit is. If you already knew about the 110 and the 70, well, then this might uh, just kill two birds with one stone. Answer what the upgrades are and help you to define a little better what the differences are between the 120 and 75. Either way, whatever the reason, we're really happy that you've chosen to join us today for the video. If it's the first time that you are seeing us here on YouTube, we would love for you to hit that subscribe button and notification bell because we'd love for you to be back for future videos. It really helps us out and we love meeting people from all around the world. So without further ado, let's dive right in to the brand new KDP series from Kauai right now. When you've got two products as popular as the KDP, well, I guess beforehand, KDP 110 and KDP 70, any kind of an update or a refresh to those products uh, is somewhat noteworthy, somewhat newsworthy, because it's gonna affect a big slice of the digital piano market. And a few months ago, I believe right at the end of May or beginning of June of this year, Kawhi announced that the KDP 110 would hereby be updated or replaced uh, by the KDP 120 and the KDP 70 was going to become the KDP 75. Uh, and so they're finally here. And in this video, as we said in the intro, we're going to be talking about how they compare with one another and where they sit in the marketplace and perhaps whether it might be a good fit for you if you are searching for a digital piano right now. The KDP 110 uh, really was a bit of a game changer uh, in the industry um, for a few reasons. It delivered for its price point a very responsive action. It was a triple sensor action. It delivered uh, at the time it was released completely unique levels of rated uh, speaker output for its price. It was 40 watts of rated power. It had individual note sampling uh, which again for its price point uh, was pretty unique, uh, pretty um, just, uh, just a high value uh, offering. It had Bluetooth. Uh, there were a whole bunch of things about the instrument um, that made it stand out amongst its peers. But it came out in, I think, 2017 or 2018. Um, and since that time, the field has become a little more crowded few of the competitors have caught up. So the first thing that would cross my mind is, is the 120 going to be as unique and as high value an offering in 2021 as the KDP 110 was in 2000, whatever it was, I think 2018 perhaps is when they first came out with it. Uh, and then is the KDP 75 much of an upgrade over the KDP 70? Because when it came to the KDP 110 and KDP 70, it always seemed to me that the 110 was the piano that Kawhi wanted to make, and the 70 was the piano they had to make because of a price point. Um, I would say that between the 75 and the 120 now, the 75 feels a lot more capable than the 70 did. Uh, the gap between the 75 and the 70 is more meaningful, I would say, than the gap between the KDP 110 to the KDP 120. If you are a shopper, and you're thinking to yourself, I kind of want to be in around the $1,000 price point-ish. I'm looking for a serious instrument to be 
say a first instrument or uh, uh, possibly a secondary piano you know in the home or a teaching studio or something like that I'm really just looking for something that delivers a pretty solid action and a, a convincing piano sound that's my priority gonna be hard to miss the KDP series uh, in 2021 just as it was in 2018 so when we're talking about the upgrade from the 70 to the 75 there's a lot of significant uh, meat on the bones here this is not a fluffy uh, kind of cosmetic upgrade with just uh, really nothing material changing there's lots of things that have changed from the 70 to the 75 you have USB whereas there were just the five pin din before you have an upgrade in the speakers. We have 18 watts of rated power versus the 16 watts of rated power. Um, it now includes the SKEX sample set, whereas before it was just the EX sample set, um, uh, kind of basically what was in the ES110 before. So we have now a, a unity between all things tone generator between the KDP 120 versus the KDP 75 and that was not the case with the KDP 110 versus the KDP 70. So we've got an improved tone generator, we've got improved speakers, we've got uh, an enhanced set of uh, connection points um, via the USB. And the result, as you might imagine, is a really satisfying tone that goes in my view, way beyond what the KDP-70 was delivering. really nice musical instrument to play very responsive and particularly if you're playing on headphones you're going to be really challenged to hear much of a difference between the 75 and the 120 it makes sense we're talking about the same tone generator uh, where you might start to notice a playing difference between the two is the triple sensor versus the dual sensor in casual, normal, kind of beginner level playing, doubtful that anybody's actually ever going to hear or sense any kind of a difference between that. There's a few situations where the triple sensor becomes an asset. One of them is when you start to play fairly uh, quickly or fairly aggressively where you have a lot of repeated notes, that triple sensor can help um, uh, to better detect or better eliminate false strikes and, and um, you know, MIDI spikes, all of a sudden you have 127, uh, you know, uh, MIDI data flying out from everywhere for no good reason at all. Um, it also can generally improve the accuracy and the resolution of the MIDI um, as it's being transmitted if you were going to be using this for any kind of tracking or recording of MIDI information. But if it's just playing, doubtful you're really going to notice any difference between the dual and the triple sensor. So know your use case and only you can decide whether that is a critical feature or not. But that's one spot where you might notice a difference between the 75 and the 120. Other than that, the user interface is identical and the only other difference between the two instruments that we haven't already mentioned would be the cabinet. So on this KDP 75, you have a fairly durable but 
maybe not as attractive a, a finish on it. It is a less expensive type of veneer that they put on this. It looks good and uh, to be honest there's some things to like about it more than the other veneer because you can't see fingerprints on it. Like fingerprints literally don't exist on this finish. But it is available in this uh, satin black and it's going to be available in like a satin uh, white and it's kind of got this micro pebbly texture to it. So it doesn't really look like a wood veneer but that's the only other difference between the 75 and the 120. It's got a number of different sounds on it and selecting those sounds is fairly simple. There's two different methods that you can use. You can either just fire through the sound select button and it goes through it in sequential order or you can hold that sound select button and press uh, various white keys which are assigned to those tones. So you have the acoustic piano, the main acoustic piano sound here. As you can hear they're cycling through. Side note, for the price, I'd say uh, a rotary speaker enabled jazz organ on this particular tone engine out of the KDPs and the ES110s, probably the best sounding jazz organ in the whole industry at this price range. I just got to throw Kawhi some props for that. It's definitely more uh, authentic to my ear anyway than what Roland produces or Casio produces or Yamaha produces for this price range. And even on the 75, Sounds pretty good. And then in the very next one, it's like, why is there decay on a pipe organ? that in real life has absolutely no decay. You hold the note, it should just, anyway, whatever. That's the last one. Almost the last one. And that's all there is to the 75. It's going to compare extremely well to something like uh, the YDP 144. It's going to compare really well to something like uh, the Casio PX770 or 870, that series in there stacks up very well. Um, almost uh, uh, kind of sits just slightly below like the Roland RP102, whereas the KDP120 kind of sits slightly above it in terms of just overall blend of specs. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of very compelling arguments to say that if the only priorities you have shopping at this price range are the quality of the acoustic piano tone and a, and a nice convincing action, it's going to be hard to be, be, uh, beat the uh, KDP 75, honestly. So now let's pop over to the KDP 120. And first let's start with how this has been improved over the 110. There are fewer differences between it and its predecessor versus the 75 and the 70, which we already made mention of. We've still got 40 watts of rated speaker power, which still puts it 
uh, right at the top of uh, power output uh, in its price range. Uh, I believe there's one other in the marketplace that, that delivers the 40 watt thing in and around this price range. Uh, I think it might be the Casio. Um, but there isn't anything that exceeds the 40 watts uh, and they've maintained that. They have added, um, a along with the KDP75, there is now uh, the improved sort of lower dynamic uh, range. Basically, that's just some compression going on so that if when you're playing really, really quietly, uh, your quietest notes don't completely disappear. So it sort of uh, kicks in sort of an automatic uh, compression uh, to make sure that you can still play it with some, some uh, satisfaction um, at a lower volume, basically. Uh, it's got the spatial headphone um, settings so that you can really get a nice binaural uh, experience the way you want it. Same with this one. And generally, as we've said, these two share exactly the same tone generator. So you've still got the uh, SKEX. So where are those improvements? Um, you've got improved padding in the uh, Hammer Responsive Compact 2, uh, but it still has the triple sensor as the KDP-110 did, no escapement on this piano. is um, now also includes uh, connectivity through Bluetooth MIDI as well as uh, USB. Um, now it did that before, uh, but it is now compatible with Kawhi's newest app, so you can get into the virtual technician uh, through that app really easily. Um, they've redesigned the key cover a little bit. I don't notice a big difference. It is now also available in three different colors, which is kind of an interesting uh, option. One of the things that people uh, really wished about the KDP-110 is that it was available in multiple colors. Well, now you're gonna be able to get it in multiple colors. It comes in a satin black, a satin white, and a premium rosewood uh, that you see uh, right here. So that more or less sums up the differences between the 110 and the 120. So the 120 is still delivering a great punch, but it wasn't an instrument that was dying for an upgrade or a refresh. And they haven't changed the price point really, and they haven't changed much about the instrument at all. I do like the fact that there is some added padding there. Uh, one of the things about uh, the Kawhi action is it was always fairly quiet on the way down, but on the way back up, it could have used some extra padding. We've made mention of that, that the Kawhi was a bit louder uh, on the upstroke uh, than other actions. So that is now uh, improved in this action. Um, so. In and around the low thousand, you know, low teens, this is still delivering a phenomenal, you know, musical experience. Uh, you've got the 40 watts of power, which is gonna give you tons of dynamic range, a lot more than most. You've got the triple sensor, uh, which is also a little unusual and particularly helpful for anybody who might be thinking about using this as a MIDI input device. You've got the option of now having uh, three different colors to choose from and still, uh, a phenomenal uh, acoustic piano sound. So if anything, the daylight between these two instruments has now shrunk a little bit. You really do have the option now to choose for a few hundred dollars difference, whether you want the triple sensor or not, whether you want the uh, increased speaker output or not, and whether you have a need for a slightly nicer cabinet. If none of those things are uh, absolute deal breakers for you, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna find more satisfaction out of the 75 for this price gap than they did uh, between the 110 and the 70.
for people where that extra speaker output is still pretty critical, you're gonna be playing more without headphones than with headphones, and this is gonna sit somewhere where it is kind of a big deal, whether this looks like a real piece of wood or not. Well, a few hundred dollars is actually not that much to spend. So if anything, Kawhi's made this a little harder a decision because I think in a lot of cases, the KDP 110 versus the 70 was a bit of a no-brainer for people who came in and it wasn't so much about sticking to a specific budget uh, as it was finding the best value. This now, I'm not sure the 120 necessarily wears the value crown as much as the 110 did when it was compared to the 70. Really is a bit of a horse race here. We hope that you've enjoyed and got something out of this comparison between these two pianos. And I also hope that you're gonna have a chance to get into a showroom somewhere around you. Of course, if you're in Toronto, come see us. Uh, but these are available all around the world. Um, go try them, have fun. They're really great instruments. If it's the first time you've seen us here on YouTube, we'd also really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It's important you do both uh, so that you'll know every time we come out with a new video because we would love to have you back as a participating commenter or just a passive viewer enjoying what we're doing here and soaking up all things piano. So we'll see you back again soon. My name is Stu Harrison and have yourselves a great day. <laughs>